Trump will face the New York DA, Alvin Bragg, in that case, which says basically Trump lied in business records and had a kind of a campaign secrecy plot because he didn't want the voters to know everything about him going into the 2016 election. Now, Trump is still trying to do delay games. They're seeking a, quote, indefinite adjournment because of what they call prejudicial press coverage and that jurors have been exposed to unfair media. That's an argument that we do not believe would lead to a change in the trial schedule, but the judge could, of course, hear it. We're also learning more about what could happen at this trial. One source telling NBC that Hope Hicks, the former Trump spokesperson, is now expected to testify. She worked with Trump and dealt with Michael Cohen in the run-up to that 2016 election. Now, is Trump worried? Well, there are some clear signs that he is, and that he's not going to just let his lawyers or the evidence do the talking. He has been facing this gag order we reported on. Now he's attacking the judge's daughter again over the weekend. The DA urging the judge to, quote, make abundantly clear the gag order prohibits that kind of attack. There's a filing where they say Trump's rhetoric is now dangerous, violent, and reprehensible. Trump's attorneys then responded within minutes and said his attacks are, in their view, quote, constitutionally protected speech. Now, judges and members of Trump's own party are condemning this pattern of violent and vicious rhetoric. It is very troubling because I think it is an attack on the rule of law when judges are threatened and particularly when their family uh, is threatened. And it's something that's wrong and should not happen. His attacks, vicious attacks, on the federal courts and the state courts and their individual judges. Um, his objective was to delegitimize those courts. I think everyone needs to tone down the rhetoric. Families should always be off limits. Families should be off limits. And we're talking about someone who was president running to be president again while going after the judge's daughter with smears that I'm not going to repeat here in the news. Now, that's one piece of it as he awaits trial. Trump is also using his platforms to try to continue to foment violence. His attacks on the president that he's running against include a disturbing image, as the New York Times put it, has the current president of the United States hog-tied, a, a kind of a maneuver where you tie someone up if you were kidnapping them or trying to use violence against them. Trump's rhetoric has grown even more violent as the trials approach. In two weeks, he will be facing a judge, and you can see on this the other cases that could also come. He may be showing panic. He may be trying to change the conversation, but he's also testing the limits of what we, in trial or in government and elections, will allow people to do when it comes to openly fomenting violence against the sitting president of the United States. We are joined by former acting Solicitor General Neil Kachel. Uh, Neil, you are known to be very thoughtful, very sober-minded. Uh, I never have you on, and you're never freaking out. Um, and yet, at the same time, I'm curious what you think first on that kind of violence. Yes, there's great free speech protections we can discuss, um, but it's been well established that doing things that could jeopardize the safety of the sitting president or lead others to do so uh, are generally over that line. Your, your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, I mean, George, I mean, uh, Donald Trump is behaving, I think, like in a horrendous manner. And Judge Reggie Walton, who was appointed by George W. Bush uh, to our court in Washington, D.C., who you just showed an excerpt from, I think called him out exactly right. This place, this behavior has no place whatsoever in our court system. And, you know, the district attorney in Manhattan today sought a gag order to prevent this. And I think the reason for that in this trial and other trials is because of two things, Trump's insolence and his influence. I mean, the average defendant doesn't act like a child and lash out in this way. They don't attack the family of the judge overseeing the trial and the like. And more importantly, the average defendant doesn't have the means to go and call out basically right. the mob who are following his every word. And those two things make the gag order essential. And so I was glad to see Reggie Walton and Judge Michael Ludig and others, you know, call Trump out for this. Yeah. I mean, some of this also echoes the way society had to deal with this in 2016, when he was saying, oh, well, we should ban people on the basis of their religion. And he was appealing to direct hate and discrimination. And we've been through all that, covered all that. And where is the line? The American Bar Association, which doesn't generally take sides in sort of political or partisan ways, um, I do want to note, says all judges must be free to decide cases and issue rulings without fear 
for their safety or that of their family. While they cannot speak out to protect themselves, we can and we will. Our system of justice depends on it. Um, so it may be solid that these other entities are trying to hold the line. Um, but is this how Trump is going to operate through the whole trial? And does that at some level um, reward him? A hundred percent. It's, you know, he's never stopped. He's incorrigible. And I do think, Ari, there's a difference between what Trump did in the campaign in 2016 and what he's doing now. I mean, I'll hold it. No one can hold a candle to me about the Muslim ban and what Trump did there. I fought it all the way to the Supreme Court. But there's a difference between that type of rhetoric and what he's doing here, which is delegitimizing an entire branch of our government and a kind of the crown jewel of our democracy, the judicial system, and trying to make it so that he's above the law. Um, you know, both are evil. They're just evil in different ways. And look, I get it. Donald Trump is scared. I mean, as you reported a moment ago, Hope Hicks is now evidently testifying for the prosecution against him in this Manhattan hush money case. Um, and that underscores what the district attorney has said all along. This is not just a a case about paying off a porn star. It's about when that payoff occurred. It was right before a presidential election, and Trump used a cutout, his lawyer Michael Cohen, to try and disguise his payments. And Hope Hicks very well may know some very serious things about that. Yeah, and in that sense, I mean, this continues to go downhill. We have covered how Trump tried to get people uh, on his side exercised about the potential. Uh, the lawful search of his property, the arrests, which he's now faced several times, very, you know, peaceful, organized, but arrests where he was booked as a criminal defendant. Um, thankfully, we didn't see people come out. I mean, there's also this gap between what he hopes might be out there and with a justice system that's seen all these uh, Jan Six plotters and others convicted, many of them incarcerated, there are people who say, well, I'm, I'm not going to go respond to that out of, out of self-interest. That's how deterrence works. Um, and yet my, my sort of final question you hear on the trial front, Neil, is... If he continues this way, he's almost daring the judge to take some measure beyond fining him for the gag order. He, you know, but it's hard to imagine a judge in this scenario wanting to do what we call pre-trial pre incarceration, a, a jailing uh, for contempt a defendant. And so what do you think happens here if the judge is trying not to get pulled all the way into that, uh, but Trump is going to continue to clearly break the rules? Yeah, I think that the judge ultimately does face that hard choice um, and is unlikely to jail him. I do think that there'll be sterner warnings, there'll be a clearer gag order and the like. And then it's just a question of how much Trump comes up to the line. Uh, Trump, this intersects, sorry, with Trump's other strategy, which is to say there's so much pretrial publicity that I can't get a fair trial. I mean, that argument is generally a loser every day of the week. I mean, Derek Chauvin, in my case in, the, in Minnesota, yeah. the George Floyd murder, made that argument. It lost. But I think Trump's hope is, well, if the judge can be adequately provoked, that will create the kind of pretrial publicity that might justify delaying his trial. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.